So here's the code we're going to use. There's not very much of it, but the important thing is that I am importing this Redstone library, Stephen Redstone. And I happen to have written the Redstone library. It's right here. It's not that complicated, but I'm not going to go into it in this video tutorial, maybe in another one. But just a reminder, a library is code that you or somebody else wrote to make other code easier to write. So here's some code I wrote to make other code that deals with redstone easier. And in this particular program, what I'm going to do is whenever someone steps on a pressure plate, it teleports me back five blocks. So let's give it a shot. I'll first make a redstone lamp because I like to use those for testing. And then one, two, three, four, five blocks away, I'll make a pressure plate. Then I could destroy this redstone lamp and put a pressure plate there instead. And what should happen is when I step on it, I get teleported back. But it didn't, it didn't work. It says unknown command, so I must have mistyped something. That's right, you don't need this slash right here. You always subtract off one slash from the way you would normally run it inside the game. So we'll try again. Replace that pressure plate with the redstone lamp, and since I don't actually want the redstone lamp, I'll use the pressure plate again. And when I step on the pressure plate, I get teleported back to the other pressure plate. That's exactly the mechanic that we want. Now all we have to do is craft a clever way to disguise that you're actually getting teleported. And then the player will think that they're trapped inside of an infinite series of rooms. And now I'll just build the base for two different rooms around these two pressure plates. I'm speeding things up considerably so you don't have to watch me build it for too long. And I'll start building the second layer here. And I use a little bit of world edit to help build the wall. And then once the wall is built, I add a couple of placeholder blocks and set a roof. Now we need to make sure that once they go in, they can't go back out the same way. So let's put a door right there. We'll use a simple pressure plate to open that door. So now they can go in, but they can't go back out. So that's how they get trapped. And then in between the two rooms, we want a door. But we want to be able to open that door with redstone. So now you can go through. And we want a door right here that looks like you can open it with redstone, which you can, but that's the pressure point, pressure plate that is going to teleport us back into the room from before. So when I try to open it, now suddenly I'm in the other room. But it's still not quite perfect because I can see the way out right here and that spoils the illusion, so we need to fix that. So we'll just put a little bit on the outside of the last room so that when they look out they they don't see the outside. It looks like it's another room. This doesn't have to be perfect. They're never going to get into that room anyway. And I think the last finishing touch is to make sure there's a torch on the wall also to help control for the light level. Yeah, I think that's a perfectly nice effect. You really can't quite tell. Yeah, so you really can't tell that you're just going into the same room over and over again. It feels like you're going into a new room each time. Now, of course, for right now, whoever you want to spring the trap on, you have to put their name right there. 
there are probably some other ways to do it. Maybe we'll cover that in another series, but I wanted to give you the simplest possible way to get that effect of an infinite hallway trap. And I'll start building the second layer here. And I'll use a little bit of world edit to help build the wall. And then once the wall is built, I add a couple of placeholder blocks and set a roof. 